Today we'll be talking about Miley Cyrus and Hester Prynne from The Scarlet Letter. Both of these women are individuals within their community that have had some defining event happen in their lifetime. This is one action that has changed them from someone that is seen as respectable or well-loved in their community to someone who is breaking the norm and creating a new image for themselves that is not as good as their previous image was before. These women have both chosen to break from their societal rules and to do something that's against their society's expectations that's not what would be suggested or they're creating their own idea on what they think sh they should be doing. This lets us see them through an existential lens as they try to define themselves through their own actions and their own self. What we'll be investigating today is whether these existential choices they make are actually truly their own choices or whether they're very much influenced by the society they are in and whether the society is impacting their choices or choices are impacting the society's image of them. Our lives are made up of many events and these events can impact who we are. But sometimes the media and the public image around us can view us through the eyes of one event and that can influence how we make our own actions, therefore defining who we are. We'll be investigating whether this happened with both Hester and Marley. In The Scarlet Letter, the main character, Hester Prynne, has an event that defines her reputation. She commits adultery and, because of this, becomes pregnant with her daughter, Pearl. In Hester's village, nothing really happened very often. So when this big scandal broke out, everyone jumped on it really quickly and they were very quick to change Hester's reputation from that of a good one to a bad one after one mistake that she made. They, she was their form of entertainment because nothing else was really going on. The community chose to judge her based off of this one event and disregarded all of her other good works previously before her committing adultery and all of her good works after her committing adultery because they focused on her one sin. Hester Prince's defining event was a private choice that resulted in public consequences, but Miley Cyrus's was intentionally in full view of the public eye. Her defining event came in 2013 at the VMAs. There, there she performed a show that featured adult content viewed as inappropriate for her target audience of rather young girls. The show featured twerking and an outfit that no teddy bear ever asked to be part of. Her reputation previously had been that of Hannah Montana, a wholesome role model for young girls that parents and their mammals used as an example for their daughters. Afterward, her reputation was more fitting to people who rejected such terms of modesty and traditional social roles. After Hester's society found out about her sin of adultery, she was treated as an outcast and was never really a part of society and never felt included. She was completely secluded from everyone else. In all her intercourse with society, however, there was nothing that made her feel as if she belonged to it. Every gesture, every word, and even the silence of those with whom she came in contact implied and often expressed that she was banished and as much alone as if she inhabited another sphere or communicated with the common nature by other organs and senses than the rest of humankind. Hester is an example of existentialism because she is trying to discover what her real identity is between that of the one the community has given her of adulterer and of her own identity based on her actions of charity. She's trying to figure out whether she truly is the sinner that everyone says she is, or if she is her own person of good works and love. For both Miley and Hester, their respective defining events completely changed how the public viewed them. Both events were public and permanent. Hester's because she brought a new life into the world, and Miley's because we all have access to the internet and anyone can pull up her video and watch it and watch her performance. Although both Miley and Hester's defining events were public and permanent, Miley's reputation seems to be a lot more fluid and flexible. In the first place, Miley seemed to be the one who wanted her reputation to change. Before her performance at the VMAs, she was doing different things to catch the public's attention and draw her reputation away from that of a child star related to Disney. 
Hester, on the other hand, did not want her reputation to change. And part of the reason that Hester's reputation was a lot more rigid than Miley's was due to the morals of the society that they lived in. Miley lived in a society of looser morals where it's a bit more acceptable to go out of the line and be out of the box. That's a lot more acceptable. Hester, on the other hand, lived in a Puritan society where stepping outside of the box and doing anything out of the norm was very, very wrong and was harshly judged upon. After their defining event, Hester and Miley really don't have trouble changing their good reputation to that of a bad one. However, after this defining event, they have a lot of trouble changing it afterwards. Not so much Miley because she desired for her reputation to become that of more of a rebellious sort. Hester, on the other hand, did not want her reputation to become that of a sinner, and it was a lot harder for her to go from a bad reputation back to that of a good one because the community was very eager to jump on her, and same with Miley when they did something considered wrong, and like whenever she went back and tried to do something good. The community really likes scandal and anything wrong, and is very quick to jump on people who break norms and do things that aren't correct according to their standards. Miley is easily as popular as she was before the VMAs, but her fan base has forever changed. Where her fan base was previously young girls and their parents in search of a role model, it is now people that reject traditional codes of modesty and constricting social roles. Miley's new reputation now entails her to act in obnoxious, usually inappropriate ways, and shows that her new reputation has fully replaced the old. Some people view this transition as trashy, but there are some that admire her ability to so confidently reject an image that was cultivated so carefully for her. There have been a few incidents before the VMAs that were where she acted contrary to that image, such as a near naked photo shoot for Vanity Fair that was quite uncomfortable, but m people seem to genuinely outrage that Miley as an individual would dare to reject an image that her community had cultivated so carefully for her. Miley reacted to such public scrutiny by continuing to act contrary to her old image and saying that she was acting as her true self. I love my music so much and I love what I'm doing so much that that has become my other half rather than another person. While Miley Cyrus is not here to comment, quotes like this suggest that she is comfortable sacrificing her old image for a newer, pixie-haired one. Recently, artwork Miley made was showcased under the name Dirty Hippie. The artwork was a mix of extremely childish and extremely adult themes. The pieces are crudely formed with bright neon colors and clumsy construction. The pieces are made of candy, small toys, and very adult paraphernalia, references to drugs and alcohol. In fact, the picture you're looking at now is the only one I could find that did not have such paraphernalia on it. The artwork is but a visual representation of Miley's new reputation, having been known for her scandalous outfits and songs that glorify an almost hedonistic view of life and behavior, rather than the slow country love songs and an accent that were beloved by parents and young girl alike. As Hester and Miley's societies adapted to these new reputations that had been held for these women, Visual symbols began to represent these women. For Miley, she had a haircut shortly before her VMA performance, which really showed her shedding of this traditional norm and creating a new, public, more rebellious image for herself with a haircut that was not what was generally considered as something that was beautiful or normal. She also changed her clothing to be more scandalous and more rebellious, representing her new image in society. With Hester, Hester was seen through symbols that happened because of her event, such as with Pearl, the result of her adultery, her young child, and with the scarlet A that she was forced to wear everywhere she went. Both these visual symbols showed that these women were now seen through symbols and these symbols became to represent them. They were seen through the defining event that had happened, and it didn't really matter who they were anymore. Both Hester and Miley were representations within their society of what can happen or what will happen with the defining events. Miley became this rebellious image that she tried to create. She now represents rebellion and things to society. <laughs> And they, this new rebellious image just shows that 
she has now shed her image from something that was pleasant and innocent to something more fierce. With Hester, we see her change from someone who, though she changes from someone that was considered a normal upstanding member of the Puritan community to someone that was more a more rebellious adulterer, she still was, she could still change her reputation. And though she still made her way from being adulterer to able, she was still seen through the lens of her A. Her defining events still defined her to everyone else. There was nothing else that they saw of Hester besides what she had been. Maybe what she was going to be, but what she had been still impacted their decisions. I think. So why should you care? All of us label each other and ourselves. Even if we don't say these judgments aloud, we have all made silent assumptions of one another based on reputation and experience. While these judgments aren't inherently good or bad, the belief that those people are bound to your expectations might be. Most of us will never have the opportunity to twerk at the VMAs or be threatened with being burned alive for having a child outside of marriage, but all of us have to live with other people. If we want to effectively communicate with other people and be successful as individuals and a community, we have to be able to understand one another as we are rather than how we think others should be. You, as an individual, choose how you're going to act and how you're going to see other people. While you cannot escape the effect of other people whenever you live in a community, you choose how much of an influence you are going to allow others to have on you. While you also cannot control how others see you, by simply being willing to act as a genuine individual, Rather than cowering to the pressure of your peers to act or look a certain way, you can inspire people to do the same and find people that will accept you for who you are and who you strive to be.